Hey guys, Keith here. 2020.12, one of the changes that we've introduced in that release is the concept of super strings, a very old concept that has been used back before we had pixels when you, you didn't really have the option to have these smart pixels or even dumb pixels where you could just set the RGMB and it would change the color of the pixel. People used to take LEDs, and many people still do, take strings of LEDs, twist them together to create what are commonly called super strings, and then using a, a Renard or an LOR type controller, they would uh, turn on uh, and fade uh, the various LED strings to create a, a variety of effects. When users like that have come to x -Lights, they've been frustrated because x -Lights has never really had a great way of representing super strings. Now, if your super strings happen to be red, green, blue, and white, life wasn't too hard because we do have uh, channel or pixel types or string types that do support that particular combination. But not everyone uses just red, green, blue, and white. Maybe they just use red, green, and white. Maybe they use uh, red, green, blue, white, purple, yellow, or, or some other string of pixels. And that's always been really hard to support. And the inadequate workaround has always been, well, lay down your string three or four times and you can, you can do it that way. And then you can sequence each string as a single color string. And sure it worked, but it wasn't entirely satisfying. So introduced in, in 2020.12 is, is a new string type, which is super string. It solves, I think it's fair to say some of the problems. There's always a challenge in, in the case of this in, in terms of how do you determine what color or what channels to turn on and how do you interpret things? And that's because at the end of the day, when I create this super string, you can just put a single color. We don't give you access to the underlying channel data within a model other than the, the channel block model. And we will talk about that because the channel block model does provide a bit of a workaround. So let's introduce the concept. I'm just going to use a single string. This does work with trees and other models. Um, I'm not going to spend a great deal of time talking about that, uh, but it's a similar concept to how you would do it with pixels. So let's just take a single string. And the way in which we turn this into a super string is we come down to the string properties here. Uh, we click down here and we choose the super string property. And this allows us to set the number of colors. Now, the number of colors is obviously the number of strings of LEDs inside your super string. So let's make it four. By default, it, it assigns red, green, blue, and white, but you can set these to any color you like. Uh, you can make this yellow. You can reorder these. You can say, well, that's going to be blue. And of course, you can click the dots here and, and use the color picker to choose green. I do suggest that you stick as much as you can to the primary colors here. Now, it's it's not critical. It will work if you don't, uh, but you will find when x -Lights does the color interpretation, it has some special handling around these primary colors. And what do I mean by the primary colors? Well, the primary colors are the primary colors of where these values here are either 0 or 255. So there's only seven of them. Um, there's white, which is where everything is 255. I'm going to ignore black. It's not really a color. Neither is white, but that's beside the point. Black's just off. The other primary colors are the obvious ones, red, green, and blue. And then there's the, the pairs. So when you take red and green together, you get yellow. When you take red and blue together, you get uh, magenta. And when you take blue and green together, you get what's known as cyan. 
and these are the primary colors. So what does this mean? Well, once you get away from the obvious red, green, blue, and white, uh, I would use magenta if you had purple LEDs. Uh, it's a good match. Uh, cyan, I'm less sure. I, I, I don't know that there is a color of LEDs that that works well with, and yellow obviously is pretty straightforward as well. Okay, so that, that's how you would define a super string. Now, because you're probably also going to want some individual channel control, maybe not all the time, but maybe some of the time, a way in which to get yourself individual channel control is to create a channel block model. Uh, set this to four channels. And now it's important that you define these channels in exactly the same order that we defined here, red, blue, green, and yellow. So we want to set this to red, blue, green, and yellow. The other thing you're going to want to do with this channel block is you're going to want to make sure the channels overlap because right now they don't. This uh, channel block here starts at channel 5. It says it ends at channel 20. Um, it doesn't. Um, it hasn't updated yet for some reason. But either way, doesn't matter. So one of the things you're going to want to do is set the start channel here. And you're going to want to set it to the start of the single line model. And that will force the channels here to perfectly overlap. And so when you sequence the line, it will also uh, write the data to the channels here. And when you sequence the channels here, it will actually update the data sitting behind the line. And to varying degrees, you'll be able to see that in the sequence. And we'll use that in a minute to demonstrate what's going on here. The other thing that you're probably going to want to do is you, you don't really want to see this channel block on your display. This is, you know, it's a shadow model, right? It, it, it's not really there. And so one of the things you can do is you can change the preview here to unassigned. And that will hide it from here and put it over here on the unassigned where you can still come and change its properties. All good. So let's go in and sequence. So let's open our channel block up so that we can actually see the data. And we'll go to the node level because XLights will show us the node data. And I want because I want you to see how the single line data is interpreted. So, so let's start with something really simple. Let's go and set an on effect to red and drag it down onto our single line. Uh, let's not do the fade yet. Let's just do a solid color. And you can see that when you dropped it onto the single line, X lights behind the scenes recognize, well, that's red. So I only need to turn on the red LEDs channel and it turns it on solid. You also saw there that if you set it to fade, that it will also fade those LEDs on that channel as well. So it's pretty smart. If I change it to green, it switches to the green channel. If I change it to blue, it switches to the blue channel. Now, the interesting question comes, what happens when I choose yellow? Because there's two possible ways we could have done this. We could just turn the yellow channel on, what I feel is probably the best answer. But red and green also make up yellow in the color space. And so it's tempting to say, well, maybe I should turn on red and green. But of course, we decided that was not the best thing to do. And so it just turns on the yellow channel. Now, it does create some interesting issues. What happens if I set this to yellow and this was not a yellow channel, but this was, let's say, a white channel? Well, let's go and do that because I, I do think it's important to understand how this color interpretation works. So let's set that to white. Let's do the same thing on our channel block because we need to keep them consistent. It's not that it'll break, it just it will produce results which are very hard to explain if you get them wrong. And so now we've set it to yellow and you'll notice because it couldn't find a perfect primary color match to the color that was being set here, it's actually gone and set the red and green channels on. So it's decided, well, I couldn't find a perfect match, so I will go and apply the best RGB color match to the color that has been set here and turns on the red and the green channels. And if you set it to fade, it would fade the red and green channels as if it was a pixel, but 
in this case, it's obviously different channels and it's obviously reordered them from the classic red, uh, green, blue order to the order that we've defined here. Now, of course, if we set our on effect to white, in this case, of course, it would turn the white channel on because it knows that, hey, it's white and I can just turn on the white channel. I don't need to turn on the red and green. If I go quickly back to my layout and I change this back to yellow, because uh, I, I want you to see that as well. Change that back to yellow. And I go back to my sequencer and now I look at my white. You'll notice that in setting it to white, it's actually gone and set the red, blue, green, and yellow channels. And the reason for this is Xlights has looked at the white and it said, well, there's no perfect match for white, so I'm going to have to make up the color as best I can. Now, because all of the the because yellow is full on green and full on red, and that is contained within white, it will turn on the yellow channel as well. And in fact, as long as you don't have a white channel here in in the the super string, whenever you drop white onto the super string, all of the lights on the super string will turn on. That's just the behavior. Now, of course, you're not limited to just using uh, uh, simple on effects here. Uh, you can put any of the effects on. So you can take something with potentially lots of different colors. Uh, I need something that's going to change. Uh, uh, let's do color wash. That was probably a better one. And you can see that Color Wash has done the interpretation over the course of the effect and turned on different channels at different times, depending on which color has been set. You can also see that when the color is not a perfect color, you get those combinations together. But when it's the perfect color, it'll only turn on the green in this case, because at this point here, there is clearly only green in the color. But as you move away from full green, you start to get mixes. And because there's again, there's no perfect match, it will start to turn on other colors. And so at the point at which it's perfectly yellow, it will turn on perfectly yellow. In this case, it probably didn't quite get to perfectly yellow, so it's never just yellow. But if there was a point, if I stretched, if I stretched this effect out such that the color transition was so slow, you could well get a point in this transition where it was perfectly yellow and you'd get a, a microsecond or a single frame where red and green turned off and only the yellow was on. And that's just what's going to happen in the interpretation of the color space. So guys, I, I, yeah, I, I, I think it's a, a it's an interesting development for those of you using super strings. I, I think it may give you additional options, either just simpler visualization options. Now I know some of you out there are going to say, "Hang on a second, that's not what I expected. What I was hoping that when you drew this super string is that you would drew, draw in this case four dots around each pixel and show me each LED." Unfortunately, guys, that's not what we've done, and that would be extremely difficult to do just because that's just not how these things work in X Lights. But hopefully, it does give you the ability to sequence them more simply. Um, while the, the representation may not be perfect, I think the representation is definitely better than you probably currently have with a channel block. It's up to you whether it's it's a better representation than having uh, the four strings of pixels alongside each other and um, and seeing the single channel LEDs. But look, hope it uh, helps. Thanks, guys. <laughs>